Welcome guys. In this video, we are going to see the all geared headstock mechanism construction and its working principle in a very simple and easy way with the help of some animations. In the description box, you can able to download the study material. Uh, let's see the importance of this mechanism. It provides a high range of spindle speed especially in semi automatic lanes and this all gear headstock mechanism is more efficient than the previous case uh, that is our cone pulley mechanism as well as the bag gear arrangements the power available at the tool is almost constant for all the spindle speeds and here there is no need of belt shifting and the vibration of the spindle is reduced and we can able to transmit more power this is the simple two dimensional diagram of all geared headstock mechanism it is mainly used in direct lathe to obtain nine different speeds let's see the construction of all geared headstock mechanism headstock is a compact one inside the hollow cast iron frame three shafts are there the top and the bottom shaft is a spline type of shaft uh, it will be look like this image and one intermediate shaft is attached at the middle of the hollow cast iron the horizontal and rotary movement is possible for bottom and top spline shaft the intermediate shaft can only rotate here the horizontal movement is arrested and a constant speed motor is attached to the top spline shaft through a belt drive and each shaft is containing three gears uh, make a note of this the model of the gear is same here the nine gears are having the same module the speed changing is made by shifting the levers by which we can able to obtain the nine different speeds let's see the speed one if suppose the gears are arranged in this position means the electric motor is going to give the power to the top spline shaft in the top spline shaft we are having three gears gear one gear two gear three the three gears are going to revolve in the same rpm the gear 2 is going to transmit the rotary motion to gear number 5 now the intermediate shaft will rotate along with gear 4 and gear 6 at the same rpm of gear 5 but gear 4 and gear 6 is not having any engagement with the bottom spline shaft gear 5 is only going to transmit the rotary motion to gear 8 if suppose the gear 8 is going to rotate means see the bottom spline shaft is also going to rotate by which we can able to obtain the rotary movement at our spindle and this is the formula by which we can able to derive the speed of our spindle and the formula is speed of the first driver divided by speed of the last driven equal to product of number of teeth on driven divided by product of number of teeth on drivers that is n1 divided by n3 n1 is our first driver n3 is our last driven and see first we have to see the uh, first power transmission that is from the gear 2 we are going to rotate our gear 5 that's why g5 divided by g2 into and the second power transmission is happening in between uh, from G5 we are going to rotate our G8 gear that's it so the formula is G5 into G8 divided by G2 into G5 that's it by class multiplication we can able to obtain the RPM of N3 let's see the speed 2 now I am going to shift some gears with the help of the levers uh, for example I am going to push the bottom splined shaft due to this the gear 4 and the gear 7 is going to in case at the same time the gear 5 and the gear 2 will be in the engaged mode okay we are only shifting the bottom spline shaft uh, let's see the power transmission 
from the electric motor the power is transmitted to the pulley and from the pulley the power is transmitted to top splined shaft gear number 2 from gear 2 gear 5 is going to rotate then the intermediate shaft is going to rotate at the same time the encased gear 4 and 7 is going to transmit the power from the gear 7 our head stop spindle is going to revolve yeah that's all and this is the formula for speed 2 similarly for the speed number 3 we have to shift the bottom splined shaft at the right end so that the gear 6 and 9 is going to engage see gear 2 and the gear 5 is still in engage mode okay uh, that's not a problem uh, let's see the power transmission electric motor pulley and then pulley 2 gear number 2 gear 2 to gear 5 and if suppose gear 5 is going to rotate means our intermediate shaft is also going to revolve at the same rpm along with gear 6 gear 6 is going to transmit the power to gear 9 that's all if gear 9 is rotated means our headstock spindle is also going to revolve and this is the form of a speed 3 now we are going to learn how to set speed number 4 I am going to shift the top spline shaft towards my left or right hand. Okay, now I am going to shift towards my left hand. If suppose I have shifted my top spline shaft towards the left side means my gear 1 and gear 4 is going to engage and the power transmission is electrical motor to pulley, pulley to gear number 1, gear number 1 to gear number 4. If gear number 4 is going to revolve means our intermediate shaft is going to rotate and gear 6 is also going to be rotated. Gear 6 and gear 9 is in the engaged mode. If gear 9 is rotated means our headstock spindle is also going to be rotated. That's it. And this is the formula for gear number and this is the formula for speed number 4. Let's see speed number 5. For speed number 5, shift the bottom spline shaft lever and engage the gear 5 and gear 8. And the power transmission will be look like this. Rapid and motor to gear 1 and then gear 4, gear 5, gear 8 and our head stroke spindle. That's it. And this is formula for speed number 5. For speed number 6, once again shift the bottom spline shaft lever and connect gear 4 and gear 7 and uh, this is the power transmission let's see speed 7 once again we have to move towards our top spline shaft and shift it towards the right side by which we can able to connect gear 3 and gear 6 that's all and the power transmission will be look like this similarly we can able to obtain speed number 8 by connecting gear 5 and gear 8 for speed 9 we have to connect gear 6 and gear 9 and these are the advantage of the system it is compact in design wide range of spindle speed is available no need of manual belt shifting and the speed of the spindle can be easily changed in a rapid manner with help of the levers and uh, this is the disadvantage of the system it is a very costlier one here we have to use some lubricant so that we can able to avoid the loss of power in between the gear due to heat and uh, due to the engaging and the disengaging of the gear tooth there will be a small wear and tear sometimes the tooth will be broken and the replacement time is very very high and that's all about all gear headstock mechanism guys thank you uh, thanks for learning here you can